हेलो 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 एवरीवन आई होप यू आर डूइंग गुड मेंटली एंड फिजिकली फिट एंड फाइन सो फ्रेंड्स वी आर री रिकॉर्डिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर बिकॉज देर वर सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज आई एम थैंकफुल टू सिकासा एस आई आर सी फॉर अरेंजिंग दिस रिविजन सेशन गाइज एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर रिविजन सेशन गाइज वॉट वी हैव डन इज for the new course we have uh, made two types of revision videos one is full concepts all concept revision and 350 plus important concept uh, 350 plus important question revision and we have recorded all of them we were left with only one part and that was chapter 3 to chapter chapter 3 to chapter 12 all concept revision in english hindi we are through with everything we were left only with this and so we planned this with the chennai branch on 26 27 and 28 okay and uh, today's 26th uh, uh, session was having some technical problems so i said that okay let me re-record it for you guys quickly so in this particular video we are going to cover in very short time 800 series 800 805 and 810 quickly let's see guys so there is a case study and simply case study this involves application of knowledge of the 800 series nothing else we will see the concept then automatically you will understand how it is applied there so 800 series uh, has three standards 800 805 and 810 and 800 deals with audit of special purpose financial statement 805 deals with audit of single and single financial statement and element of financial statement and 810 deals with all of summary financial statements we are going to see one by one all of them now all the three standards have all the three standards have one thing in common initially they talk about whether to accept these assignments because they are truly new type of assignments for everyone for the society for the chartered accountants for everyone so you should be careful when you accept them after that how planning and performance should be done and finally how opinion should be formed and how reporting should be done so they principally focus on these three things so first one is sa 800 so it is going to focus on again as i discussed three things now the first thing is what do you mean by general purpose financial statement and special purpose financial statements uh, how they are different from each other so now what do you mean by financial reporting framework basic principle and format which is used for preparing financial statements that is called as financial reporting framework like as plus schedule 3 is a framework for small companies indes plus schedule 3 as plus banking regulation uh, as plus uh, ird regulation and so on all these are frameworks now frameworks which are they, which are prepared for the information need of public at large shareholders financiers government employees everyone that is called general purpose framework majority of the framework which we know are general purpose framework and financial statement prepared using them are called general purpose financial statement now the frameworks which are prepared for specific users they are called special purpose framework and financial statement prepared with the help of them they are called special purpose financial statements for example let's see now this is the example we have example in front of us rcc r for regulator so telecom regulatory authority tells everyone all the telecom companies prepare your financial statement again region wise divide your business into seven regions seven columns and make columnar financial statement how much you earn from each region how much is the expenditure how much the asset and liabilities so that it is useful for us to determine the spectrum fees and what should be region wise fees and so on so there it is prepared specifically for the regulator try it is a special per Uh, it, it it will be a special purpose financial statement prepared by the instructions given by the tri that is special purpose framework then next is suppose there is a contract there is a joint venture contract between you and me and the last two pages it specifies what will be the format of financial statements and how they will be prepared it will be useful only for you and me so that particular contract based framework is a special purpose framework c then c stand for creditors creditors may say that you prepare financial statements on cash basis assets on realizable value liabilities on payable value liabilities on payable value that will be again that will be again a special purpose framework so now we know what is 
special purpose, general purpose framework and financial statements, special purpose framework and financial statements. Now, what about acceptance? So, if these assignments are offered to you, we should see land points. So, we should focus on three points and that is land points. So, what is what are these land points? L stands for law. Law related things are there. If, if standards, standards and format, if the framework is prescribed, prescribed, if the, if the principles and the format are prescribed by law, we will presume that it is an acceptable, it is an acceptable financial reporting framework. Acceptable financial reporting framework will presume that unless you have specific information against it. This is targeted in MCQ. Then if the standards are recognized by, uh, if standards are issued by recognized bodies like ICAI, again it will be presumed that, it will be presumed that they are acceptable. And see, it's in a sequence. If it is given by law, presumed acceptable. Given by recognized body, presumed acceptable. Below that, if the standards are supplemented by law, so standards are prepared by someone, maybe they are not so much recognized, plus the plus law gives the format or other important things. So there's a combination. In this, uh, we'll have to evaluate, we have to evaluate whether it is an acceptable framework or not. And if there is a conflict between both, it will be resolved as per SA210. Sometimes conflict may happen and SA210 explains how to resolve it. So that is L. So see what law says. Then apart from this, if there are other financial reporting frameworks, we have to see their attributes, features and we need to think carefully, are they acceptable? Okay, they should be complete, they should be reliable, they should be consistent and so on. N stand for need of intended users. See whether the framework, see whether the framework fulfills the need of the intended users. Some users, some of them may want detailed information about the revenue. Some of them may want detailed information about the asset and so on. See whether the framework is fulfilling those requirements. So if it is, if so, these land points need to be seen. If the land points are positive, uh, positive, then we should think about accepting a particular audit of special purpose financial statement. Then how to plan and perform? When, when we are planning, when we are planning and performing these audits, it's very simple. The first most important thing is when we plan and perform, ensure that there is a compliance of eth ethical requirements that we are fulfilling the five, you are fulfilling five principles five principles of ethical requirement and ensuring that the whole team is independent. And then the next very important, ensuring compliance with all the standards. Yes, it is mandatory to follow all the standards. This may be targeted in MCQ. You need to follow all the standards from SA 200 to 700. But then if there are there, there can be exceptions, if standard is not applicable like 510 or conditions are not fulfilled, like there is no reason to modify SA 705, it's absolutely fine. Some standards may not get applicable. There can be departure. We may go against the standards. Even that is possible. Going against the standard, guys. Going against the standards is absolutely fine. It may happen sometimes that uh, alternative audit procedures are more, more effective. Even that is allowed. For example, sometimes physically, very physically attending uh, Attending physical verification may not be possible. Drone technology may be more effective uh, when it comes to physical verification of the trees and the forests. So we may use it. So that is allowed. Adjusting standards are allowed. And now they give the example. Like SA-260. Uh, when you apply SA-260, many times you will find that TCWG and management are same. So we don't need to, if something we have communicated as a management, uh, so communicated to management, we don't need to communicate same point because they are TCWG also. Uh, sometimes TCWG for general purpose financial statement and special purpose will be different. So you should be careful in identifying them. People who are having oversight, supervising the process may be different. SA 320, very important, there was MCQ on this. Sometimes they may specify that this is the threshold limit. Below this, if there is any misstatement, no need to worry about it, no rectification need to be done. They may have specified it. But we will have to find out mortality as per SA 320. And definitely you need to follow all the principles of SA 700 when it comes to forming opinion and then making report. So we are through with the second part of the standard. 
that is planning and performance. Now, let us go to next and the most important thing is description of description. So, it says that special purpose framework is totally new thing. It is responsibility of the management to go to the notes to accounts and explain everything about special purpose financial reporting framework. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? These financial statements are prepared. Explain the purpose. Uh, explain the purpose, whether it is valuation, whether it is license, uh, analysis, who are the intended users, it's government, private investors, bankers, who prepared the complete framework, what's the origin, explain these important things and auditor will evaluate whether disclosure is adequate or not, whether these things PIO is properly explained or not. Then auditor is in auditor when he makes audit report, he is supposed to put a separate paragraph. In separate paragraph, this separate paragraph will be EMP and in this we are going to highlight what is the purpose of this special purpose framework, intended users and from which particular note people can know more about the person, users and the origin. So management will also highlight and we are also going to highlight. Apart from that, in this particular paragraph we may include, we may say that this is for a particular set of users, it is not useful for others. It is not useful, it is not useful for others, we may alert the users and we may put the restriction that it should not be distributed to others and uh, distributed to others and it should not be used by others. Even if someone uses, we are not responsible. So we are going to highlight this framework, we are going to alert users and we are, we are going to put restrictions. We are going to do three things in that particular paragraph and the heading is generally basis of accounting. Uh, basic, basis of accounting, alerting and restrictions. So, such kind of heading will come when it comes to EMP. So, that is last two points were the very most important points. Like I mean, so that is a special thing. 800 talks about putting this, uh, doing these two things that is a special in SA 800. Then we go to SA 805. SA 805 is about audit of Audit of single financial statement that is balance sheet, PL, or cash flow statement. Audit of element of financial statement that means a big part of the uh, uh, element of financial statement. It can be asset, liability, income, expense, or um, uh, or some part like uh, fixed assets, current assets, and so on. That's called element of financial statement. Account can be uh, particular uh, sales account, debtors account, and item can be a specific income, expense, asset, liability. So, nowadays there are such assignments that do only out of finance, single financial statement, element of financial statement or out of account and out of item. What to do in this case? Let us understand this guys. So, in this case SA 805 will get applicable. Now we know what is, what is, now we know what is single financial statement. What is element of financial statements? When we talk about element, Suppose we talk about current assets. So all the notes which are related to current assets will be will be part of that particular element. Notes to accounts will always become part of particular element. Now here again we talk about, as I said, three things we are going to majorly talk in 800 series: acceptance, planning, performance, and then opinion and reporting. Now here about acceptance. So here. When it comes to acceptance, again three things are extremely important guys, three things are extremely important because it was so important, It was because it was so important, they have put this particular point in acceptance itself. Number one, we are going to accept this assignment provided, there are three important things provided, provided uh, we are able to, we should be confident that we will be able to comply we will be able to comply with ethical requirements and independence requirement then we will be able to we will be able to we will be able to comply um, comply with all the standards on auditing exceptions are fine departures are fine if there are more effective procedures and uh, uh, sometimes okay uh, we need to adjust even that is fine so first most important think carefully whether you will be able to comply with ethical requirement, independent re independence requirement and comply with all the standards on auditing, exceptions are fine, departures are fine, adjustments are fine. That is first. 
Next, I will say that I am bringing the sequence. So, that is the first thing. We need acceptable, we need acceptable financial reporting framework. Guys, these are just purely repetition of what we have seen in SA 800. We need a acceptable financial reporting framework. Uh, it should be, it should be, it should be complete, it should be reliable, it should be consistent and so on. If it is prescribed by uh, law, it is presumed acceptable. A recognized body, it is presumed acceptable. And third thing is very interesting and very, very, very important. And very important that can a person other than regular auditor do audit of single financial statement or element? Answer is yes. The person doing this audit can be different, but the person need to be extremely careful. He need to take care of three things. UAD, UD. UD in Hindi it means flying. He should be careful while flying. First, U is for understanding. He need to understand whether he will be able to gain same level of understanding of the business uh, about the uh, in about the industry, business, internal control system, which generally an uh, auditor of complete set of financial statement has, whether he will be able to generate same level of understanding. Then A stand for whether he will be able, to, whether he will be able to understand quality of accounting records and other accounting information, whether he will be able to, whether he will be able to understand and find out the in general quality of accounting in accounting records and uh, other information okay whether he will be whether he will be able to generate same will be able, able to generate same level of understanding with respect to reliability whether he will be able to judge uh, understand judge reliability of accounting records and information on same level then d whether his work is going to be disproportionate he is taking just fixed assets, but there is an issue with Boeing concern. His work will be much disproportionate, much more than what he is checking. So, you need to take care of these three things. If you can, you can understand, if you can obtain the same level of understanding, if he can know reliability of accounting records and other information, if he can protect himself against the disproportionate work, anyone can go for these assignments. Just take care of these three things. Extremely important point. Now, after acceptance comes the next point. Okay, when you are planning and performing this audit, there should be an accurate aim. That's the shortcut. So, if you are doing uh, assignment under eight zero five, there should be accurate aim. There should be accurate aim, guys. Now, uh, accurate aim. Now, what do you mean? What do you mean by what do you mean by this uh, accurate aim? Let's understand. A stand for adopting standards on auditing. Yes, guys. So when when you apply standards on auditing to audit of single financial statement or element of financial statement, you will have to adjust standards on auditing. You will have to adjust standards on auditing. Okay. For example, we are going to see, we are going to talk about maternity. You have maternity at financial statement, but when you are doing audit only of debtors or only of current assets, you need to adjust that maturity level. So they are saying. We are supposed to adopt, adjust all the standards on auditing when we are doing this. Okay. So, aim, so accurate aim. Then A stand for, that's lovely and very important from MCQ point of view. We can use audit evidence gathered during the audit of complete set of financial statements. If you have done audit of complete set of financial statement, you have literally covered evidence for each and every area of financial statement. Now, that particular evidence can be used and vice versa evidence from here can be used there also that is going to make audit very effective then i send for interrelationship whenever you check certain financial account whenever you check certain financial items in certain financial items okay you will have to check you will have to see the interrelationship ratios with other financial items which are not covered in audit yes suppose you are supposed to check current assets so when you are suppose you are supposed to check supposed to check current assets so when you go, so when you go and check so you when you go and check current assets guys okay in that particular case you will have to automatically see how sales are moving how purchase are moving data turnover ratio inventory turnover ratio purchase turnover ratio you will have to look at the interrelationships also 
and then M stand for maturity. So accurate aim, you need to adopt standards on auditing, make adjustments to them and then apply them. Then A stand for, you can use audit evidence in these particular assignments, audit evidence of complete set of financial statement. You need to look into the interrelationship with the other financial items and areas even though they are not covered in audit and we need to adjust maturity level. Maturity level of financial statement will be different and maturity for debtors and current assets is going to be on the lower side different. Finally, finally we finally we talk we talk about opinion guys. So, okay, when you are forming, uh, again the shortcut, this is not very important, ATS opinion. So, when you have to form, when you have to form opinion, we have to form opinion whether financial statements are as per as per as per law rules regulations applicable financial reporting framework so when you frame opinion think about it whether financial statements are as per law rules regulations is it as per applicable financial reporting framework a for applicable framework then sometimes uh, management may have a special request okay and they may have a special request read terms of engagement carefully what they want us to check what what kind of opinion they want us to give Okay, so terms of engagement are important. So while when we form opinion, when we form opinion, we we form opinion whether it is as per applicable financial reporting framework, law rules and regulation, then T whether it is as whether it is as per the requirements of terms of engagement, warnings may come from there. S stand for consideration for single financial statement of specific element. Now we need to be very careful, guys, here. So when you are making the opinion, you need to understand that applicable financial reporting frameworks are generally there for complete set of financial statement. They are not prepared keeping in mind, uh, keeping in mind single financial statement or element of financial statements. So we need to understand what financial reporting framework talks about single statement element and is it suitable, is it suitable and giving adequate disclosures for single financial statement specific element. So keeping that in mind, we need to form the opinion, okay. Opinion wordings are going to be pretty simple if it's a fair presentation framework, whether financial statements are uh, as per applicable framework plus, whether they give true, when it's come to fair presentation, we give, go one step ahead, whether it gives a true and fair view or whether it's present, whether it presents fairly, presents fairly in all, presents fairly in all material respect, okay. Presents fairly, presents fairly in all in all material respects okay now when it comes to compliance framework we only go and see whether it's as per applicable financial reporting framework so when you are we are going to frame opinion think about frame opinion think about the wordings think about applicable financial reporting framework what terms of engagement say then as for specific consideration, whether the framework talks about single financial element, yes or not. Okay. And finally, the opinion wordings. Now, whether to use the fair word or not, that's a, that's a very important thing. Whether to use true and fair view word, whether to use presence fair in all material respect. We need to take into point some, arc the judgment. We need to, you know, uh, that's just a shortcut. Uh, we need to keep in mind certain things. First, framework we need to consider read and understand the framework is it for the complete set and is it directly indirectly is it applicable to single financial statement or a single financial statement or uh, element of financial statements is it applicable to them is it positive about their application to it okay we are supposed to see whether there is any restriction of application to a single financial statement or element and then whether there is a compliance uh, where the full compliance, full compliance of the financial reporting framework for uh, full compliance of financial reporting framework with respect to that particular single financial statement or element of financial statement. So whether to use the word true and fair or pr fair, presence fair in all material respect, arc, see what framework says, see whether there are restrictions, see there is the full compliance, see whether there are departures departures from what framework says or additional disclosures okay if these things are really positive giving more information better information positive information we'll use the wordings true and fair and if uh, there are doubts there are issues there are problem unresolved matters we may not use these strong wordings very influential wordings 
whatever it is lot of judgment is required whether to use fair word or not okay so uh, the judgment was the guys this is all concept revision this is a uh, listen guys this is the all concept revision so it is absolutely fine now focus more on the concepts where there is a pink star now forming opinion so uh, before this we had a question form of opinion what kind of word uh, what kind of wordings will be there and so on now the question is how to form opinion we have to use the principles of ss700 ss700 tells us in detail that go and check all material items are they free from material misstatement look uh, look at the uncorrected misstatements also look at the quality of financial statements so follow the principles given ss700 when it comes to forming the opinion then very very important from the exam point of view if you are given assignment to audit complete set as well as you are giving assignment for single financial element give separate opinion don't club it in one single audit report make separate audit reports okay you may publish it together that's absolutely fine you want to form opinion use principles of 700 give separate or uh, give separate opinions okay then you may publish it together it's up to you but it should be differentiated it should be different that it is a, these are the audit report on complete set of financial statement and these are the complete set of financial statement and this is uh, that is single financial statement and then uh, audit report of audit report of single financial it should be clearly differentiated okay there should be satisfactory differentiation if there is no differentiation don't issue the report it should be differentiated people should not get not get confused between audit of complete set and for complete set of financial statement and single financial statement now very 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 important effect of modification extremely important expect of modification now let's see guys so if the opinion on complete set of financial statement is modified if opinion on complete set of financial statement is modified then go and understand what's the matter of modification what is the issue what's the problem in which financial item and see whether it is having effect on single financial statement or element of financial statement it may have an effect it may not have an effect okay there's a problem with revenue and we are talking about pnl it is having an effect but if you're talking about balance sheet it may not have the effect so you need to consider what's the issue what's the matter exactly and whether it's having effect or not further if you are giving adverse or disclaimer on complete set then you cannot give unmodified opinion on single financial statement or element blanket ban is there because if you are saying that majority of the financial statement is adverse or majority you are not able to get evidence you give disclaimer how can you come back and say that okay majority things are problematic wrong but uh, uh, in the same set of financial statement single financial statement is good element is good how can you say that that's not allowed okay if you are saying something is bad it's bad you cannot take out a big part and say that it is unmodified but then there is an exception and that is the most important thing if you are doing audit of specific element not financial statement specific element and if three conditions are fulfilled you can give unmodified opinion number one there is no prohibition on in giving clean report unmodified report so it's not there in india next it should not be published together there should there will be confusion there will be confusion it should not be published together there should not be any kind of prohibition uh, there is no prohibition not published together and it should not be a major part of the financial statements then it can happen that on specific on specific uh, element you may give a clean report when it comes to single financial statement you can never give it even if they are published separately they are further specified it was uh, always there is a ban but they again specified that that is extremely important consider the effect if there is an adverse disclaimer no unmodified opinion there are exception if three conditions are fulfilled you can you can give clean opinion okay if single financial statement uh, cannot uh, we cannot give clean unmodified opinion there that's not possible even if they are not published together now we have more more very interesting clarifications about it Duro points in Hindi it means to get be fearful. Duro disclaimer, very 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 interesting point. Very interesting point. It says that if you are giving if you are giving disclaimer, disclaimer of uh, opinion 
on uh, results of operations you are giving it on pnl on pnl you are giving disclaimer okay on pnl guys on pnl you are on pnl you are giving disclaimer or when it comes to uh, uh, cash flow statement you are giving disclaimer it is absolutely fine that you give unmodified opinion on state of affairs balance sheet yes very interesting you may go for disclaimer that you don't know anything about pnl balance sheet but when it comes to financial position state of affairs you are very confident you can see assets you can see the liabilities it is this unique situation is possible disclaimer on on pnl and cash flow statement but clean opinion on balance sheet that is possible adequate disclosures a very elaborate detailed disclosure should be there in notes to accounts with respect to single financial statement an element of financial statement okay adequate disclosure any material transaction events it should be disclosed clearly a reference to material irrespective of whether modification is having any effect on the single financial statement or element irrespective of that you should always put a other matter paragraph and explain people that on complete set this was the problem and this was the reason this was the problem this was the reason that should be communicated then other standards and auditing are applicable as it is so even uh, even after you know everything dero points are there beautiful point of disclaimer then adequacy of uh, disclosures is a important point whether disclosures are properly uh, there in notes to accounts about single financial statement element reference to modification is must other essays are also applicable few examples of them t schedule few examples of them t schedule okay so tangible assets uh, tangible assets extra uh, if there is a schedule of tangible assets that comes the schedule tangible asset that is on element of financial statement externally managed assets like pension plans schedule of that again uh, element of financial statement account receivable uh, that is a particular account particular account schedule of disbursement that is out of particular item so they are giving example when it comes to specific elements tangible assets externally managed assets okay account trade receivables related items item uh, schedule of disbursement these are the example of single financial statement element of financial statements and uh, accounts or items now next is audit of summary financial statements now the question is audit of summary financial statements now the question is uh, what is summary financial statement guys what do you mean by summary summary is summary is something summary is something which is derived from the derived from detail uh, derived from detailed uh, derived from detailed financial statements okay detailed financial statements uh derived from the comp uh, audited complete set of financial statement but it is having comparatively less detail especially notes to accounts overall structure is same but the notes to account details are comparatively less so that is called summary financial statement the most important point in acceptance is only auditor of complete set of financial statement can do the audit of summary financial statement primary condition no exception to it and then uh, and this is very important because only that person has a full knowledge of the entity and its environment internal controls uh, of complete financial statement and will be in position to understand summary and audit it then there are further conditions as we have been discussing they use the word criteria so we use we use the word financial reporting framework for basic principles and format when it comes to summary the basic principle and format which is used that's called criteria in india we have form aoc3 aoc3 gives the format and the content of summary financial statement so aoc3 is criteria so just like we said that financial reporting framework should be acceptable the next is applied criteria should be acceptable first explain first first explain what is criteria so basic principle and format which is used is called applied criteria there is always a risk that summary financial statements become misleading we are aggregating we are we are uh, 
taking the information and adding them, aggregating. Sometimes if we if, if unrated items are aggregated, so say fixed asset and current assets, such kind of aggregations are not going to work. They are useless, they are completely misleading. Okay. So we need to be very careful how aggregation, totaling, uh, addition is done. So first we need to explain what is criteria, then to explain the challenges involved, risk involved, misleading chances, and hence auditor should carefully see. Carefully see and evaluate the criteria. These are the factors involved. NPI should not be misleading. N stand for nature of the entity. Whether this criteria is suitable for business entity, non-business entity, is it suitable for that? The basic principle and format is suitable. The purpose, okay, NPI. Next is purpose. Is it is it giving you all the information for valuation of shares as per uh, as per revenue, valuation of share, as per net assets. Okay, what is the purpose? Is it giving you full uh, information required for that purpose? Whether information needs of the intended uh, intended users, okay, whether it will be fulfilled, we will be able to fulfill the need, information need of the users. And we need to check that it is not misleading. Summary should not be misleading. So, we need to see the factors, nature of, is it suitable for nature of the industry, purpose is fulfilled, information needs, it is not misleading. Title should be very clear that it is the abridged financial statement, summary financial statements. So, if you want to say yes to this particular assignment, you are supposed to talk about what is applied criteria, supposed to talk about applied criteria, what are the issues involved, what factors need to be seen. Now, broadly, when it comes to types of criteria, Recognize criteria, criteria which are approved, which are criteria which are approved, okay, uh, uh, by a recognized body that is again presumed as an acceptable criteria. If it is given by the management, you will have to study, analyze it, whether it is acceptable or not. Uh, if it is given by the management, if it turns out to be unacceptable, if it turns out to be, okay. That so, guys, uh, criteria should be good that we have seen. If it is given by law or recognized body, it is presumed acceptable by management. We need to evaluate. If it comes to be unacceptable, don't accept the assignment unless required by law. And if law enforces it, then do it, but don't give reference to standards on auditing. And write clearly in the engagement letter that we are not going to give reference to standards on auditing. So, first we talk about whether the criteria is good, criteria is acceptable, depending different types of criteria. Then they are supposed to give it to us in writing in agreement that preparing financial statements is their, uh, is their responsibility. Is their preparing financial statement is their responsibility. Then after preparing, making it available, but preparing uh, preparation of summary is their responsibility. After preparing summary, ensuring that uh, audited financial statements are easily available to people. First, we will make everything. Then you are supposed to make things available to people. Okay. That is that's the uh, very important requirement. If law says that no need to make it available freely to everyone, okay, manage, then we need to analyze whether there is such kind of law is there. And we need to describe that, describe this in notes to account. There is a law which says that it's 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 absolutely fine if it's even it's not available easily or available to only few people as per law. We will need to evaluate whether it's freely available, whether description of ability clearly explains how to obtain it. It's there in notes to accounts. Uh, it's a public document, easily people can access it through public domain like MCA ready access should be there then we say that it is clearly available inclusion of audit report management is responsible to include auditors report on summary financial statement in document that contain wherever summary financial statement will go audited uh, the audit report will also go so guys the first point was criteria should be lovely criteria should be acceptable it should be mind blown and we talked about uh, recognized criteria and other criteria and so on next we need in agreement every damn thing that your responsibility to prepare things, make uh, uh, make things available. If loss is not no required, uh, 
explain in notes to account of summary financial statement evaluate uh, availability so we first spoke about the criteria then we spoke about the agreement it talks about preparation and responsibilities then uh, uh, very important to evaluate whether it is a fina audited financial statement complete set is available to everyone or not okay and then Wherever summary financial statement, there will be along with that audit report on summary financial statements. Then form of open will discuss. So we just discuss the acceptance. Okay. Just discuss about the acceptance. It was all about the criteria and about uh, getting responsibilities written in the agreement. Now next is what kind of procedures? How, how will you check summary financial statement? So there we have a dada. Dada means gunda, uh, means uh, bad man. So, Dada at CCD. So, Dada at CCD is going to help us. Dada at CCD is going to help us. So, first we are supposed to check, evaluate the disclosures. When we use summary financial statement, disclosure are extremely important. Whether proper breakups and explanations are given about summary financial statements, evaluating the disclosure. When it comes to procedure, we need to see whether disclosure is adequate, complete. Then, whether availability whether uh, audit financial statements are easy easily available okay easily available to everyone different modes are there whether it is clearly described what should be the website link and how to access audit financial statements audit financial statements and finally we we need to compare with compare the data in summary with uh, audit financial statements whether uh, we need to recalculate whether they agree with each other. Four detailed figures should add up into one figure uh, on summary financial statements. Compliance, check compliance, CCD, C4, check compliance of the applied criteria, the compl uh, criteria is complied with, whether disclosure is as per criteria. So, it's great. Dada at CCD. We need to evaluate disclosures. Availability of electricity available are there. Okay. Description of availability of audit financial statement visit. It is uh, easily available. And then CCD. Appropriate level of aggregation should be there. Excess aggregation can lead to misleading things. Compare. Uh, we need to compare with audit financial statement. Compliance with applied criteria. Disclosure and so on. That's how do you perform very simple. Form of opinion. Wordings will be whether it's a fair summary, consistent summary. Wordings can be prescribed by law. If law prescribes something which is not acceptable, can be misleading, then think about it. Can we add few words and make it make it uh, better, uh, understandable? So, form of opinion, wordings are, we, we talk whether the summary is a fair summary or a consistent summary. Now, Next is mitigating misunderstanding. Now, mitigating, mitigating misunderstanding that if law prescribes the wordings, see whether additional disclosures can mitigate the misunderstanding. If not, and still you have to do the audit, don't give reference of essay. Don't give reference. So, when it comes to form of the opinion, they have very simple wordings are there. But law can come and do all the nuisance. So be careful in that case. What will be the format of the audit report? What will the audit report format? Very simple title. It will be independent auditor, auditor's report on summary financial statement. Addressee. Uh, addressee. It can be appointing authority. It can be board of directors. Board of directors who have appointed addressee. Then there will be introductory paragraph. We will identify that okay it is a. Uh, audit report we have done audit of summary financial statements and they were derived from so and so audit financial statements on which report so and so report was given uh, whether it was unmodified or modified so we are going to identify things yes it's audit of summary it was derived from so and so financial statement report was given so and so date we will clearly specify in introductory paragraph only about subsequent events there will be always a gap between audit of regular financial statement and summary financial statements in between things are not checked will clearly specify 
in between things are not checked at all subsequent events are not checked okay then we are going to again make people caution cautious that reading summary financial statement is not substitute to reading detailed financial statements so it is guys this format is based on the old audit report format in old audit report format opinion was after auditor's responsibility uh, that that is the only change and basis of opinion used to come base of opinion used to come only when there is a modification only these two changes so first we have title then we have addressee then we have intro paragraph where we uh, make identify things and then you make people cautious uh, we warn people make them cautious then we have management responsibility of preparation of summary auditor's responsibility to do audit of uh, summary financial statement as per sa 810 and we give opinion on summary is it a fair or consistent summary signature date place when it comes to date when it comes to date it's pretty simple and when it comes to date it's pretty simple first ensure that summary financial statement are prepared it is signed by proper representative they have taken the responsibility of summary we have obtained all the sufficient appropriate evidence what is required and then only we should sign the report and the place of signature a very 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 interesting what will happen if the complete set Uh, of financial statement, auditor has given qualified opinion EMP or OMP. If on complete set a qualified uh, EMP OMP is there, if there is a situation, okay, we need to specify mandatorily in the summer in the audit report on summary financial statement that listen, complete set the opinion on complete set is qualified. It's having EMP OMP. Describe it. complete basis for qualification should be included complete emp omp should be included okay and how it affects summary financial statement that should be given see guys in audit of summary in audit report on summary financial statement we talk about two things whether the summarization process was proper whether it was properly summarized properly summarized from the detailed financial statements and we also talk about and we also talk about about uh, what are the what are the issues and problems issues and problems uh, in financial statement and its effect on the summary so here we are going to say yes these are the these are the problems and uh, so and so part of the summary financial statements are not proper to that extent now very interesting if there is adverse if there is a adverse or disclaimer again we'll specify in audit report directly that the complete set the opinion on complete set is adverse or adverse or disclaimer we are going to describe include basis paragraph and then we say that because the source is so bad there is a adverse or disclaimer it will be inappropriate to give opinion on summarization process to say that the source is adverse and disclaimer and then to come out and say that it is a fair summary will be contradictory so we go for denial of opinion if it would have been just a qualification emp omp we would have include everything that's it include everything include the effect that's it with adverse disclaimer we'll include everything we'll do the same but at the end we'll say that it will be inappropriate to express opinion on the summary financial statements can the opinion on summary financial statement get modified the summarization process yes yes it can if there's a inconsistency if the summary financial statement is not consistent it doesn't match with the detailed financial statement we we'll have to say that it's not a fair summary and management is not ready to change it okay so here directly we give adverse there is no question of qualification when it comes to if they are not consistent it's a big thing adverse opinion it's not a fair summary okay we may again uh, alert people that it is not useful for others we'll restrict that don't submit to others and even if you do that we are not responsible if it is a, if it is a special purpose framework we will alert with respect to special purpose framework also then very simple things about the comparatives so the complete set may have a comparatives and summary financial statement may not may not have uh, may not have comparatives see whether it is having a major impact on the understanding if it is having a major impact on the understanding it is uh, if it is having a major impact that there was big changes as compared to last year no proper understanding is obtained okay then then we we'll have to include in the report that no it is not it's not a fair summary it's not giving proper understanding okay and if it is audited by if the uh, comparatives are uh, 
last year is audited by someone else, we need to put an OMP to explain that it is audited by someone else. Supplementary information, we know additional information not required by, by a criteria or FRF. Okay, it should be clearly differentiated, it should be written after a financial statement have ended. If there is no proper clear differentiation, we will ask management to do it. They don't do it, we write it in the audit report. Other information just like 720. Guys, majority of the things are like standards. Go and read other information, other things in annual report. See if there are visual material inconsistencies or uh, something, uh, material inconsistencies are there. Okay. It should be investigated and proper action should, uh, investigated and see what is wrong. Whether summary is wrong or other information is wrong should be specified and proper steps should be taken. Now, there can be two situations, auditors association, important thing. Suppose, auditor plan, do, he pro, people, management promised that wherever summary will go, audit report will go, but then it's not planning to include summary, audit report on summary financial statement along with summary financial statement. We'll ask management to not to do this. Always along with the financial statement report should go. If management is not taking proper action, auditor will take some action. Make public announcement about it. Go and speak at AGM and tell about it. Then the next is, they have not uh, appointed or auditor for audit of summary financial statement. Directly, indirectly, it should not be inferred that summary financial statements are audited or examined in any manner. It should not be a message directly, indirectly that summary is audited and audited by so and so person. If the message is like that, go to the management, don't do this. Don't use our name for, with summary financial statement when we are not in the audit. You can appoint us and we'll do it for you. If management refuses, again take action. We'll go and tell everyone that we have not done audit of summary financial statement. Okay. So situation one was they are not ready to circulate or situation two was they are not ready to appoint but simply claim that it is audited. Lastly, timing of the work and even subsequent. Now listen, once we are supposed to report when the complete audit is over, complete audit is uh, when summary is prepared, acceptance is there, audit is over. No additional evidence is required. Then we put a report on summary financial statement and we don't check subsequent events. Guys, this was the portion we covered which was not happening properly. Rest of the things we will see tomorrow.